Welcome back to What Are Tea Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the 212A, the Tier 9 Soviet SPG, South Spawn of Steps, and it's under the command of Talon 1958. Well, Talon hasn't had a few replays in a while because, uh, well, he had rather a lot a while back, and so, uh, well, we haven't been holding the back, it's just he's been sending so many that it's difficult to do his replays and not to exclude other people, so. Yep, we've got a number of his and Angelina's replays coming up. Oh, the enemy EPR is already dead. Oh, I do feel so sorry for him. Oh, he didn't have a good gaming experience. But anyway, that's tough. If you take an EPR onto the battlefield, you better be prepared to die. <laughs> okay, his first shot with a 203mm howitzer was at the strip 103B. With an HE round, 900 alpha, 52mm of penetration, and he's not carrying any premium HE or armor piercing rounds because he knows better than to do that. Because, uh, yes, you don't get good results with them anyway, and it just doesn't seem any point when at least you can get stunned with the HE. Well, we lost sight of the cram bomb, but only momentarily. Okay, he's dialing in on that position again, and there's a TNH. Viz 51 in the same region. He fires the round in, and unfortunately, the enemy moves and we knock down a tree instead. There's that strip 103B. You can see he did take some damage. Somebody hit him. It may have been Talon, it may, might be somebody else. Okay, Talon's now going to go after the Leopard prototype, the tier 9 German. Changes his mind and is now dialing in on the E5 at the far end. If you get a shot on target. Oh, he's tracked. He's tracked. Get it right. Rounds out. Oh, he moved. Oh, but he's still got some splash because the shell landed directly behind him. Okay, this position is fairly good for actually shooting the tanks over this side of the map. Although the shallow trajectory that Wargaming has actually applied to most RT nowadays does make it somewhat difficult to hit tanks that are sitting over a ridgeline like this Maelstrom. But he's almost loaded. He's got a 30.15 second reload. Flies around and gets a nice hit. 37.39 is the book reload, so he's dropped it quite a bit. Seven seconds. Okay, still looking over the other side of the battlefield because there's a larger number of enemy tanks over there than there is over this side. Okay, we might be able to get a hit on this T-30. He's aiming for the track area. Rounds out and the T-30 moves. As any tank that gets warning now, they move immediately. The warning comes in because they know full well a shell's on the way. And so they just dodge the shell. In a sense, actually, that's another reason for actually being closer to the target than... So there's no warning whatsoever. The shell arrives the moment they get the warning and they can't dodge it. With this TNH, all he can do is move forwards or backwards. And the round comes in and ooh, it went over the top of him. But he got some stun assist off the Bosch. And there's a hell of a battle going on on that corner. Looks like he's going to try and hit the Emil if he stays up there for long. And the Emil's gone. And they've lost the pattern as well. Okay, so we're going to fire into that corner. Hopefully we'll either hit the Fosh. Oh, there's an object 704A. It's a 704, not 704A. Up there on the heights. There might even be a, a chance that... Uh, the Talon could go right up the centre of the map, although if he did go up the centre he would be uh, liable to get hit by the Strip 103B if he gets to the other end, but they've lost their light tank in the battle, the EBR 105, so they've got nobody really to counter any RT that goes up the centre, sits in the dip. Okay, he's trying to find the enemy at the other end, it's an AMX 5120 this time, the Maelstrom's still there. 
And I believe there was another tank there as well. He's now looking over the other side, but he can't see anything because our team aren't spotting over there at the moment. So he's going to focus on these tanks, and he's found the Martian. Okay, styled in. Rounds out. Yep, that's a hit. 179. In these situations where the enemy does go missing, it's basically use whatever you can see as a target and try and maximise the damage on them whilst you're waiting for your teammates to find the more important ones. That Fosh has decided to move over this side of the battlefield, not because he's getting hit, because he is, but I think actually he's actually come over here. I have to use this, the dip. Yes, he is in the dip now. And he sees an advantage. Oh, it was a, just a little too late, that shot. He needed a little more lead on the target. He was trying to do it almost snap in a sense. He's pulling back. But the Fosh doesn't appear to be slowing down. He's just stopped for a brief moment to uh, spot for any enemy before he moves on. The strip's relocated. But I think that Fosh B is going down the centre. And other people have spotted that too. Oh, he's changed his mind. He's gone back. So maybe he saw something he didn't want to see, such as that EBR in a position where he could actually do some damage, or maybe because he was still being spotted, he's decided to return back. And here's the Fosh. Okay, now, lead the target just enough. He's loaded. He's ready. He's stopped. Rounds out. That's a hit. A big hit. 453, and the Fosh is down, so he gets the stun assist. The Object 704, who's up on the heights, has now come down. And he's now trying to prevent our guys getting through on the west side using the wreck as cover, which means he's going to have to hold on to that wreck. And that means that Talon's going to get a nice shot into his side, possibly kill him. This could be a kill shot. He's been tracked. Oh, and he's gone. Okay, the enemy RT's been spotted. And per our gentleman agreement, we will go after you if you are spotted. I know a lot of people say, um, oh, RT shouldn't do that. But if they are spotted, yes, you can go for them. And now the EBR's got him. He's definitely going to go. he fire the round in anyway. Stun him. And he gets hit. And he's gone. The EBR does get his kill, but Talon gets the hit points. The enemy are now down to just five players. The Martian's the only one holding us up from getting to the cap area. There's a Nudez over here. Should be able to get a shot on him, but instead he's going after that TNH T-51. Okay, he's going to stop there to shoot. He's pulling back. He fires around behind him. Oh, it actually, it landed in front of him, even though he aimed at the right spot. I think that was RNG. RNG was compensating and saying, where was the enemy tank? And aiming at that point or throwing the shell in that direction, even though he actually aimed behind it and it moved back into the field of fire. Okay, Striv just got hit by our uh, M53, M55. At least I think he did, but he took the stun off pretty quick. And that one won't take the stun off because he, his first aid kit will be in cooldown. So the next time we see him, he'll probably still be stunned. Oh, he's not stunned. But he is badly damaged. And one more hit should be enough to finish him off. The AE Phase 1's going in. That was a hit from the M53, M55. Go for the kill shot. Rounds out. This should kill. It does. Right on the money. There's only three enemies left. They're all in the south on the east side of the map. That Yudez is a one shot. And he's gone. The TNH is the next one. Um, he's not quite a one shot. You'd need two shots to take him out. Unless, of course, you get a penetrating shot. I think that's unlikely with a heavy. The Talon's almost ready to fire. He's stunned. Talon's work, trying to work out where he's going next. He's been very unpredictable. And that lands in front of him. But I think he's re-stunned him. And he's getting the stun assist. And there goes the TNH. And that is the end of the first battle.
is the end of battle results for the first game and it was a victory for Talon 1958 in the 212 on steps. He got a first class tanker game in that one as well as a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits on top of which he got a confederate because he hit more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. At least six tanks subsequently taken out by other teammates. His win eight in this battle was 1850 which is very good indeed. Let's have a look at team score. Well, we can see that uh, he's actually fairly well down the table. He's um, into the second half of the uh, team. Uh, there's at least five players above him on damage. And in fact, on the enemy team, there's also another four players who got more than him. So he's actually in 10th place on damage overall. 1,875 hit points. The highest damage was actually done by the FB4005, the Heshbarn, 3,498, 3,112 for the Death Star. And the next high score after that was the Strip 103B on the enemy team with 3,081 hit points. When it came to kills, it was the Heshbarn again. He got three kills. Two kills for the Death Star, the A Phase 1, the Strip 103B and the Fosh B on the enemy team. I'm afraid there was only one kill for Talon, but it was that good one. It was the Striv. <laughs> it was their best player. And he took him out with a nice shot, which landed right on top of him. When it came to base XP, it was the Progetto did the best with 967, but then it's Talon with 926 and 853 went to the T95. The T95 got a steel wall and the M53, M55 also picked up a Confederate in that game. Talon fired 15 rounds, got 4 direct hits, no penetrations, but 15 splash. Damage of 1,875 hit points, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage 7 of the enemy, killed 1, and did 1,842 hit points of stun assist or 14 stuns. On a premium count, he earned 41,015 credits, and after resupply of ammunition, took away 12,365 credits. He would have made a loss on a free player count. 1,389 XP times 3 for the first victory, 4,167 experience points altogether. He calls this one, stop their push. Well, he was right, actually, because they did actually uh, push on the east side of the map, but the guys on the right side of the map, on the west side, were actually... Um, it was actually the right side, it's the left side of the map, the west side. Um, they were actually just in a holding position. They didn't want our guys to push, so they were just trying to block us from moving up. Whilst the guys on the other side of the map, they were stopped quite efficiently, actually. Uh, I think some of their players made big mistakes like that. Emil too, who just sat on top of that uh, ground thinking, oh, I'm, I'm OK here. I can shoot at anyone. And he just got taken out very easily. Uh, and that was a complete waste of, uh, of their resources. But anyway, that's the first battle. It's a victory. Let's have a look at the second battle. The second battle is on the Muravanka map, and he's still on the 212A. And he's got some nice uh, awards there on the sides as well. Okay, game on. I must admit, I do enjoy the Muravanka games because there's plenty of places you can put your RT and be effective, and uh, you can move about the map quite a, quite a lot as well. Plenty of cover for you to move to and from. Okay, it looks like he's going to go right over in the corner behind those trees. So he can shoot at the heavies as they come up the west side of the map. The enemy's has been spotted just south of the magic forest. And it looks like he's getting ready to shoot at them from here. He's not going to go behind the trees. He's actually going to stay in the open. But he probably won't do that for long if the enemy light tanks come this way. Okay, Camp Panzer 50 ton. Dialing in. Talon likes to get accurate shots on the enemy. Fires around in. Lost sight of the enemy, but I'm pretty sure that would have hit the Camp Panzer because he will stick to that ridge line. He did get stunned. So he's picked up some stun assist. So he's opened his account, and I just heard. An arty, yep, that was an arty round landing behind him. The enemy obviously knows where he is or saw him, and you saw that little circle appear a short distance away. So it's a good job he did relocate because if he'd stayed where he was, he would have probably got hit. Okay, Waffen Traeger, and what's that? Is that Jaegeru? It is a Jaegeru. Let's go for the Waffen Traeger. Rounds out. Oh, beautiful shot! And it's a penetrator. 
and that's a high roll penetration shot because you remember the alpha on this vehicle is now 900 rather than the 1050 it used to be before and he got 962 off that shot so the Waffentrager is hurting it's going to go in for another shot without moving position it's going for the type 4 heavy he's coming on makes it an easy shot rounds out Direct hit, 268, you will need to change position now, and he's moving back from where he was, getting into the corner, you can see he's right up against the edge of the map, I've taken the borders off, kind of extends the battlefield if you know what I mean. Okay, ready to go, Jaegeru. Well if you noticed the videos on the Jaegeru, you saw that it was pretty difficult to hurt these things unless you get the lower plate. That is, of course, unless you're arty, then it's fairly easy to damage them. <laughs> That's a direct hit, 142. Changing position again. This is the thing, a lot of people don't realise all you need to use is your W key or your S key. Move a few yards, throws the enemy off. And if you can put some sideways movement into it as well, that, even he that helps even more. Because it's so difficult to work out where the enemy is now with the chasers starting so far away from the vehicle. Okay, Waffentrager popped out for a moment, but he's thought better about being there and has gone behind the house. Is he going to come out again? Yes, he is. Rounds out. Oh, kill shot! Another penetrating round. 638. That's no doubt that that's a penetrator. A 450 plus 25% would be a non penetration. But, uh, no, that was definitely a pen. So he's got two of them so far. Okay, he's ready to go again. And this time round, it's the Object 277. But he's got to dial in first. That low trajectory is a real pain, actually. Rounds out. Yep, just behind him. That house is blocking the view, actually. That's... That's one of the things firing from the corner. There's a pair of houses up ahead, which actually do make it difficult to hit somebody on that corner. He's thought about getting the Jaegeru and had a quick look at the T95, but I think he's gonna go for this Type 4, who's not quite a one-shot, but close. Okay, lining it up there. You see he's got a red line there. That's the house. Rounds out. Oh, he did get him! He did get him. He took a hit from one of our guys just before Talon's shell arrived. So he got another kill. This is a good game. Okay, T95 Doom Turtle. Still a few seconds away from shooting. No red line, so the house is not in the way. Okay, he's getting a red line there, but I think that's mainly down to the, the, the water tower. Now he's got a green line. So no obstructions now. The 277 is coming on. Okay, now. Yes! Good hit. 270 tracks him. Allows our teammates to get the better of him. And he's backing up. Okay, go for it again. That 430's on his last legs. We need a shot to disable the 277. Okay, ready. Oh, he dies just before our shell goes out. And in fact, actually doesn't go out. He's actually very careful not to shoot. And now, oh, that's going to be too close to the house, that one time. He's got a red line there, you see. So something is obstructing the field. He fires at the wizard. He gets a hit. And he goes down. And there's only two enemies left now. A 121B and an M53, M55. The 121's gone. That means it's just the enemy RT. Okay, now where is he? Somewhere in this area. Oh, he's right up against the edge. There he is. Oh, <laughs> he exploded. Here's the end of battle stats for the second game. 
That was a first class tanker yet again by Talon 1958. He got a bruiser medal yet again. This time it was nine critical hits, but he didn't get any other awards in this one. But he did get a higher win eight, 3,353, which is Super Unicum standard. So let's have a look at the uh, team scores and see exactly what he did. Well, if we look at the scores, we can see that he's actually in fifth place on his team on damage, but there were nobody on the enemy team ahead of him. So he's actually fifth place overall in the game. The high scorer was the Striv 103B on our team, 4,464. The second was the T95 on our team, got a Steel Wall and 4,068. The third highest was the AMX 50B, got a Confederate and 3,884. And Talon got 2,818. The Manticore picked up a patrol duty, so he was doing a good spotting job on the other side of the map. If we look at the number of kills, we can see that it's jointly held by Talon. He's his top scorer alongside the T95, the Concept 1B, the Manticore and the Udas 16. Nobody on the enemy team managed to get more than one kill. In fact, only three of them got kills at all. And when it came to base XP, He's actually in fourth place in the game because the T95 picked up 1,157, the Concept 1B 1,043 and the Manticore 1,020 with Talon following up with 921. He fired nine rounds in this game, got six direct hits, two penetrations. And of course, we know which one he penetrated. It was the Waffenträger of Panzerfeuer who took both of those shots. Both of them went through his armour. Um, yes, an easy tank destroyer to kill with a penetrating shot if you can get your hands on it. Another one is the Scorpion because they don't have a lot of armour and neither do the Borsigs for, for that matter. Uh, he got eight splashes on the enemy as well. 2,818 hit points, all of it at more than 300 metres. He damaged six of the enemy, killed two. And of course, I think that's the reason why he didn't get the Confederate, because he did actually get a couple of kills. 1,657 stun assist off eight stuns. On a premium count, he earned 145,324 credits. And he got 120,000 for completing a mission. So a total of 165,324. And after ammunition respy, he took away a profit of 148,134. He would have made a profit even on the free-to-play account. 1,381 XP times 2 for the first victory. Took away 2,763 experience points altogether. He said, make them pay for every inch. He was effectively saying, I'm going to deny them the ability to move past that center line. And so if they try to come past, he's going to actually hammer them. And it worked very well. The only one who actually did manage to work out how to get up to the other end was the 277. But the moment he did, Talon managed to put a round into him, which slowed him down. The 413 managed to get some damage on him before he got it killed, but the 277 was wiped out immediately afterwards. So it didn't give the enemy any advantage because they weren't able to get any tanks up our end of the map. And Talon was able to do his best to help his teammates by damaging and stunning the enemy and even taking out some of the tank destroyers or one of the tank destroyers in the process. So let's have a look at the third battle. Yes, there's three in this one. In this battle, Talon's on the north spawn of Cliff and yet again in the 212A. Game on. Well, he's got the company of a GWE 100 because this is a tier 10 game. He's tier 9 RT. So he should be able to earn extra XP for all the tier 10 hits that he makes on the enemy. Being careful to go down without doing any damage. Ooh, the GWE knocked that tree down. Again, that's a telltale sign that somebody is down in this area. But he's not going to the back, the bushes at the back. He's actually going to sit out front and try and get shots on the enemy. Okay. He's shooting for the road running up to the top of the cliff. Hopefully the Udas will get a spot for us. And he'll be able to put a round in whoever goes up there. No enemy tanks seen yet on that area. Okay, IS-3-2. He's not going to go up to the top of the cliff. Okay, we do have an enemy tank up there, but it doesn't look like he was going to go up the hill. It's a Type 61. 
And that was the Cal's battery shot from the enemy RT. So it looks like they either saw the Tracer from the GWE or they saw Talons and they tried a shot back in the opposite direction. We've got a T95 in the Western Pass and I think Talon's gonna make him pay for going there. Rounds out. Direct him. 238. He's gonna have to change position because if that RT is firing down this line, he's gonna see exactly where Talon fired from. There's a tree behind him, so he does need to be careful about that. If he backs up, he might go into the tree. Almost ready to go again. The T95's tracked. Here he goes. He might get a kill if he's... Oh! Nope. <laughs> Denied. <laughs> okay, the enemy's made a quick rush around the cliff and he's got quite a long way round. But our guys are there to stop them and he's going to go after Nudes. Nudes knew that he was being aimed at and he took a hit for 407. And Talon's changing position again to avoid Cav's battery. Uh, don't park yourself on slopes where you're actually having to angle your gun up because you won't have good gun elevation. It's, it's not, you've, um, on this RT you've got gun elevation of 45 degrees. But it's best not to park on a reverse slope. Okay, go for the units. Rounds out. Oh! <laughs> Denied. Okay, is he going to go around it? Or if you knock the wall down, they'll know you're there from that. But okay, he's decided not to knock the wall down. And he's going to shoot at the leopard prototype up on top of the cliff next to the lighthouse. Yeah, he, I think he knows he's being targeted. He's pulled back. You can hit him now. Rounds out. Oh, so close. He got some damage assist, though. And it looks like the enemy RT are not targeting him anymore. Got a pair of T95s waiting in the pass. The Leopard prototype was taken out by our Udes, so now we can go after these T95s. Oh, he had to adjust there, We've got a bit of reticule bloom. Only four degrees either side of the arc. Direct hit, 265. Now I think he's safe if he looks behind, because the tree's a little way away. Right, he could hit the lower plate, but you can see where he's actually splashed him. He got the uh, first shot on the quarter, or is that the second shot? And our teammate in the GWE is also targeting him. Oh, and he dies before the shell arrives. Okay, just a little bit of movement to throw off the enemy RT, just in case. Well, their attack around the cliff has failed. It's fizzled out. They do have a T95 just the other side of the Western Pass. And we just saw Tracer from the enemy RT in the background. I don't know if you saw that. Up on top of the cliff, they've got an STB-1, the kneeling tank. Runs out. Oh, brilliant shot! A kill shot on the STB-1 right up on top of the cliff. Our guys would have seen that and they would be very happy with that round. Yeah, because an STB like that can be a real pain to our guys trying to go around the cliff. Because he just leans over the edge, can get his gun depression increase and shoot them without them being able to get shot backs on him. Our GWE's gone to count battery. You just saw an explosion in the distance. Talon's going to... Try and hit the T-95, rounds out. And one of the enemy RT is in sight, he just got hit. And yeah, he's gone. Object Travel 7 version 2 got the kill. Their Type 61 didn't go up on top of the hill. We just heard the roar from an RT. That must be the uh, other shot from their batch at 155.58. Almost ready. 
Rounds out. This should be good. <laughs> it is. 379. Now, we did just lose the treble 7 version 2, but the T95's come back into sight. Unfortunately, he's just pulled back around the corner, so there's not a lot we can do about him for the moment. We can certainly hit that IS-3 too, but he's now moved out of sight as well. Oh, Type 61's come back. Or oh, he's still there. Go for it. Bounce out. Direct hit! Wipes him out! I think that was a penetrating shot, even though he only got 182 hit points. It hit him fair and square, right between the joint between the turret and the main hull. So, I think he did penetrate that guy. Good, he's putting a sideways component in his reposition. I think that always helps if you move sideways and forwards and backwards at the same time. You can see the GWE is moving about as well. Okay, next target. It's going to be a difficult shot from the IS-3. He's gone, so I go for the sniper's nest. Okay, the enemy RT has been spotted. The batch at 155.58. And you can't ignore that. He's gone. Go for the sniper's nest. Go up grid square. K5. Yes, he is there. There he is. There's nearly always somebody in the sniper's nest. There's two tank destroyers. The T95 and the other one was the Gorilla and the Gorilla's gone so now he can drive forward. It's all hands on deck to kill the T95. My nautical phrase is coming back in now. <laughs> yes, well, I think you all know that I was in the Navy. Okay, T95 in sight. Shotgun. Okay, how do you like it? It rammed up your... <laughs> that was a good one. 227. The T95's too occupied to hit us. We've been spotted. Oh, I hope he doesn't try. Well, it is keeping him occupied. And I think the T95's about to die anyway. And he's gone. And that's the game over. It's another victory! Here's the end of battle results and yet again he gets another first class tanker in the 212A. Well done Talon. He also got another bruiser for getting at least 5 critical hits in this one. He managed to get 8 I think that is. And his win 8 on this one was 2893. Not as high as in the last one. But still very good. Unicum standard all the same. Let's have a look at the uh, team scores. Well, in this one, we can see that he's actually in fourth place on his team. And there was, um, well, he's fourth place overall because nobody on the enemy team managed to get more hit points than he did. Talon got uh, 2,526. The Gorilla 15 got 3,772. The Yuda 16, 3,331. And the Leopard 1 managed to get a Confederate in 2,890. Whilst the 50 TP on his team managed to get a Spartan. When it came to kills, he's actually in joint second place because the Gorilla managed to get three kills. The units got two, Talon got two, 50TP got two, the VIM46 pattern, the Object Treble 7 version two, and only one player on the enemy team managed to get two kills, and that was the Gorilla 15. When it came to base XP, yep, he's actually in fourth place again because the units got the top with 10, 1020, the 50TP managed to get 993, the pattern managed to get 947, and just shortly behind him, a small amount behind him, was Talon with 924. And uh, yes, he did do a lot more damage than the GWE in that game. You can see Talon's an accomplished arty player where this guy, I think he's probably a bit of a beginner, so to speak. He's managed to get his arty, but he wasn't playing it very effectively. Whereas if Talon had the GWE 100, he would have ended up with a similar score, if not more. Let's have a look at detail. 13 shots fired, 6 direct hits, no penetrations, but 10 splash. Damage of 2,526 hit points, of which 2,299 were at more than 300 meters. The close shot was that T95. Basically, it was right up his rear from 
it, within eyesight. He could have auto-aimed onto the guy and hit him, but he decided to put an, an aim shot in. But the T-95 did see where he was, and I'm very pleased that he managed to dodge out of the way before the T-95 returned the favour. Seven enemy vehicles were damaged, two were killed. 2016 hit points of stun assist of eight stuns. He earned 46,494 credits from the game, and after ammunition resupply, took away a profit of 21,664 credits. He got 25 bonds because it was a, um, a mission completion, I think, and a tier 10 game. 1,386 base XP, 8,316 for mission completion, 9,702 experience points altogether. He said three T-95s make your shots count. Well, he was actually, and all three T-95s decided to go up the Western Passage. I don't think it worked out so well for them, though, because um, if they all charged at the same time up that passage, I think they probably would have been very effective. But instead, they actually only two of them went in at one time. The other one dawdled behind, and as a result, uh, Talon was able to get some nice shots on them. Um, he actually hit all three T-95s during the game. So, um, if you enjoyed those replays, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. Uh, uh, and of course, please do remember, we've got a sister channel called The General where you can watch some really great replays. And uh, do let other people know that what our teen noobs exists and that we're rapidly approaching seven and a half thousand battles. Yes, we've clocked up quite a few. Thanks for watching.